Sonable have released a new baby version of Smart Limit called Pure Limit, aimed at content creators or people who don't want to mess about. I sat down to do my review, and then I realized that I had at least three different Smart Limiters that use the Sonable engine. So I'll review Pure Limit, then compare it to its smart counterparts, with pros and cons for each one. But first, please like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. And use my affiliate link below at Plugin Boutique to grab their crazy deals. Right out of the box, it's easy to see why this is not a complex limiter. And that's okay. Waves L2 was the industry standard in the late 90s and early 2000s, and all it had was a single gain compensated slider, a ceiling, and little else. Pure Limit includes a lot more going on under the hood, including Sonable's own spectral compression, which will try to sonically match your master to a genre reference, three types of limiting, and the inflate feature, which is the saturation unit from Smart Limit. And speaking of Smart Limit, that is my favorite mastering limiter, possibly the cleanest limiter out there right now, as long as you don't use the saturation, but we'll get to that. Let's try this out on a track. So all we have to do here is load up Pure Limit, then pick a genre. I guess I'll go with rock for this mix, lots of guitars, but the overthinker in me finds it hard to choose from a narrow list of genres like this. Anyways, I'll loop the loudest part of the song and we'll see what happens. Pure Limit will analyze your track for a few seconds. And there we go. Looking at the loudness meter, we're hitting around 9 LUFS, which is generally what you want to deliver these days for a loud master. Although Spotify and YouTube will turn the track down to minus 14 LUFS. If you wanted a more conservative, streaming compliant master, then you can merely turn this down about 4 dB of gain. And hey presto, you have a nice minus 14 master. I usually deliver around minus nine so that it doesn't sound too quiet when I send it to a client. So to my ears, this mix sounds like a well-balanced master in terms of loudness. The kick and snare transients are coming through nicely and I'm not hearing any obvious distortion. Now, speaking of distortion, Pure Limit does add some saturation in this inflate setting. Adding some saturation during mastering is a great way to increase perceived loudness without adding more limiting, but I do want to mention something about Sonable's saturation. Back when Smart Limit was released, my colleague Paul Third did a wise test and analyzed the saturation in Smart Limit. It turns out the saturation does indeed cause aliasing, which can introduce audible bad harmonics into your signal. I thought maybe Sonable would have addressed this in Pure Limit, so I put a sweep tone through Pure Limit and engaged the saturation. Here's the sweep tone without any processing. That represents the lowest possible frequencies to the highest possible frequencies in a 48K sample rate, which is 24 kilohertz, or half the sampling rate, also known as the Nyquist frequency. In a perfect world, or the analog world, when you add saturation, you'll see this. Everything to the left is multiple harmonics of the fundamental frequency. So at, say, 50 hertz, there's a harmonic at 100 hertz and 200 hertz, etc., etc. Then, when the harmonics get to the very top at Nyquist frequency, they essentially end and do not reflect back into the signal and bounce around. Now, let's look at Pure Limit. Ouch! So now you can see, once Pure Limit saturation hits the Nyquist frequency, you start to see all these blue reflections bouncing all over the audio. These are no longer pleasing harmonics that complement the fundamental frequencies. These are random harmonics or enharmonic content that are being mixed in with your master. I don't think any mastering solution should be doing this. So for me, I'm going to turn off the inflate feature and you can add a little more gain back to compensate. You get a perfectly clean signal without the inflate. Sonable Pure Limit Pros and Cons. Pros, quick and simple, spectral processing, genre selection, great for contact creators and quick masters. Cons, 
aliasing and saturation, limited genres to choose from, not much control over sound. That brings me nicely to testing Pure Limit against its bigger predecessor, Smart Limit. Let's run Smart Limit on the same track. It's interesting to note that Smart Limit has more genres and actually forces me to pick a subgenre for rock instead of just a blanket rock reference. I'll choose Alternative. Okay, so we're getting about the same loudness, a little louder with Smart Limit. It also looks like Smart Limit did a lot more spectral adjusting in the background, including adjusting the bass control, adjusting the balance, which is the spectral correction function. And it added about the same amount of saturation as Pure Limit. So if I switch back and forth, sounds to me that the Smart Limit Master has more low end, thanks to the bass control, and perhaps sounds a little brighter. It's subtle, but I think the Smart Limit might be a tad more balanced, The Pure Limit stays true to the original's mixed sonics. Transients sound great in both plugins. And for the record, Smart Limit still introduces aliasing with the saturation. So, goodbye saturation on both plugins. Funnable Smart Limit pros and cons. Pros full control over limiter settings. More genres and subgenres. More control over spectral processing. Bass control, output gain matching, delta preview, loudness display section. Cons. Aliasing and saturation costs twice as much as pure limiter. Interface may be confusing for beginners. So now to really confuse things up, I'm going to compare pure limit and by extension, smart limit to Focusrite's fast limiter, which is made in collaboration with Sonable and uses the same architecture as smart limit, but again, positioned to the more novice user. Apart from a slightly different interface design, once again, we see the exact same genre list as Pure Limit, except Fast Limiter allows you to load a reference track. So you could merely drop a suitable reference MP3 on here, and Fast Limiter will match your track to it. Very cool. But let's select Rock once again and hit Learn. Ooh, that process really fast true to its name. And right here, we can see that Fast Limiter has the extra controls like Smart Limit, but they've added a transient section, which is really cool. The manual doesn't say much about this apart from saying it makes it possible to preserve transients. So I assume the higher this value is, the more it will try to preserve transients during limiting. Let's compare the master to the others. Fast Limiter sounds great. Another great feature here, if you switch to the detailed view, you get the same loudness readout that comes with Smart Limit. And when you hover over each processing section, it gives you a little animated display of where processing is taking place. Plus, you get more options for these processors. Each parameter has its own adjustable settings, something you don't get even in Smart Limit. And I mean, look at this. You can change how broad or precise the spectral correction is. Basically, this is like a mini soothe within Fast Limiter. You could load Fast Limiter up and just use this module as a resonance suppressor, thus giving you more value for this plugin. And I find even at high settings, it's pretty subtle, which is a good thing. 
and Fast Limiter even has a gain matching feature, so you can check your limiting at the same level as your original mix, and compare without loudness fooling your ears. I really love that Fast Limiter has all the extra bells and whistles, making it a direct competitor to Smart Limit. Focusrite Fast Limiter, pros and cons. Pros, quick and easy. Fast mode for beginners, detailed mode for advanced users. Fine-tuned spectral processing and parameters. Transient tweaking. Gain matching. Drag and drop custom reference tracks. Excellent display of gain reduction. Cons. More expensive than smart or pure limit. Aliasing and saturation like the others. Not much else. So what's my final verdict on Sonable Pure Limit? I think it's a no-brainer at that price if you don't want or need the extra control that Smart or Fast Limit offer. If you're a content creator or musician that simply wants to get your final mix out at commercial levels, then this is for you, especially at the introductory price. Pure Limit is an excellent starter limiter that can give you professional results. Just avoid the saturation. If you have some more money, then you can grab Smart Limit for $75 at Plugin Boutique or Fast Limiter for $85 from Focusrite. But really, any of these limiters are ultra clean and sound amazing. Just avoid the saturation. Really, at the end of the day, ask yourself how easy you want your limiting to be, then purchase based off of that. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, mix well.